Hi, this is Ed in San Diego, California, and uh, you're on Global TV Talk Show. A uh, special broadcast today is international, and uh, from uh, London, we have uh, Ben Jones from Simply London. Hi, Ben. And Miriam Van Keppen from Heart Relo, and you've been on before, uh, and from yep. uh, Spain. Northern Spain, Inigo Lopez from Bicortex Languages, and from uh, Southern Italy, Dino Acernia, A to Z Relo. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Hi there, everybody. So uh, this show is uh, going to focus on Relocate the Profit, which is a charity, a legitimate charity, helping uh, people who don't have much and who need stuff. And... You guys are going to talk more about that than I can, although I've been on the site and have studied uh, all the information uh, completely. Uh, so I, I am familiar with it. So let's go to uh, Ben. Uh, ben Jones, uh, welcome again. Uh, tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about Simply London. Is it a destination services provider? Yes, so we are a uh, destination service provider based in, in London. We uh, only serve London, um, so I'd say we're, we're specialists in that field. Um, big enough, our, yeah. Big enough, yeah, there's plenty to be getting on with. Um, so we stick, we stick with London. We're celebrating our, our 10th year in business this year, um, and I'm responsible for looking after our partners um and the the corporate side of the business um but it's certainly been an, an interesting year moving people into london and we um i think the the stats will tell you there's more more people have moved into london this year than even 2018 2019 so it's been a busy and interesting year for us uh patrick um if you can hear me uh why don't you shut down and try it again because that latest link should work we're waiting for another participant, Patrick Michaels, uh, who's based in Florida. Um, thank you, Ben. Uh, Simply London. Uh, Miriam, uh, I remember you you doing your, your heart thing there so well. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's really a, a trademark. So tell us a little bit about uh, heart and how you're doing uh, in the post-pandemic. Well, that's a that's a that's a good question, actually. Thank you, of course, for having us uh, for having us all and giving us the time to talk about relocate the profit. Um, so, Heart Relocation is a relocation management company, uh, which you all probably uh, have heard of. What we are trying to do is change the way relocation management is done. So, we're trying to be more personal, more focusing on wellness, more focusing on family members, well-being of everybody who's moving. Even the pets, the cats, are also very important or dogs. And um, as you might know, maybe we started Finders Keepers during the pandemic. Uh, I think that was why I was on your show the other t the, um, the the other time. Yes. So Finders Keepers is a group that we uh, founded to connect people who lost their job to people who are um, offering uh, work. Uh, and Relocate the Profit is kind of like the little brother or sister of Finders Keepers. It's a non-profit, it's, uh, there is no sales involved, there's no business development, it's just doing good and uh, yeah, trying to get the, the culture and the community a bit closer together. That's what we do. Okay, let's go to Indigo. Um, thanks, Ed, it's my pleasure to be here again with you. Um, Thank you. And today I think it's a very important discussion about relocate the profit, so. Um, hopefully, it will be very clear what we do and what uh, our aim is, and maybe some more members would be joining us. Um, I'm myself. I'm Spanish, uh, and after having lived for a few years in Brazil, France, Ireland, uh, then I'm I'm back in in Spain, living at the moment. Um, By Cortex Languages is a global um, company. We provide language training and translations across uh, every country. Uh, so as, as, as Ben said, London is big enough, but in, in my case, I, I need the, the world. So uh, the world is big enough for us. Um, yeah, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, the conversation. So, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, so Nigo, uh, are you helping people speak proper, uh, proper 
language, whatever the language would be, whether it's English or Spanish or some other, so that they can communicate better in business, not a, not necessarily in life, but business, because so many people are cross-border. Yeah, exactly. That's one of, of the objectives, but it depends a lot on the person that we are teaching. Like, uh, for instance, um, when we are talking about uh, Nasigni, depending on the country, the needs would be for business or it would be for personal life. Let's put the example of uh, Spain, France, Italy, uh, Portugal. It's very important to have the, the, the knowledge of the language so that you can use it in business too. Uh, but if you go to the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, um, you're going to be speaking in English uh, at work anyway. So the language is more for the day-to-day -to, -day to get a little bit more integrated, understand better about the culture and so on. And as we also provide uh, language training to the spouses and to the children, in their case, of course, it will be to the, uh, for the day-to-day -day life. So yeah. we, we try to adapt to the, to the needs of each um, uh, student. Great. Well, thank you very much for that. Okay, let's go to Dino. Ciao. Ciao, Ed. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for the invite. It's always yeah. good to come on your show. It's always exciting. Um, I'm Dino Isoni of A2Z Relocations, and uh, we are DSP in Italy. Um, the whole of Italy, something just because we're in the south, we just take care of the south. No, we take care of most of Italy and the islands. Uh, uh, we do have a bit of more speciality in the south of Italy because we don't work much, but we enjoy life. So that's where we're, we're speaking, <laughs> speaking doing that. Uh, obviously, we're here today to speak more about uh, this fantastic uh, ambition of ours for Relocate the Profit. And uh, uh, also, uh, there are members what you see today, but there's a whole load of other members behind us who couldn't make it today, but I'm sure they'll pick up the, uh, the registration and see uh, what we get up to. So. Uh, Great to be on your show. So let me ask you a question about um, relocate the profit. Um, how exactly does this work? And how much money are we talking about? And how often does this um, deposit happen? Mm -hmm. Dino. Shall I take this one? Well, Dino, do you want to take this one? Well, so uh, Dino, let's start with you. I think Ben is more up to speed with money. I, I kind of okay, good. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Ben Jones. Yeah, so the, the, the way that the, the initiative is set up is that each company that is a, a member of the initiative commits to donating one pound, one dollar or one euro for every invoice they raise to the initiative. So the feeling behind it is, is that whatever the, the number of invoices, so if you're a company that raises 5,000 invoices, you're a certain size. If you're a small company that raises five, then you're, everyone's contributing to the number of invoices you raise. We'd, what the, the, the idea is, is to try and keep as much of a, of a level playing field as we can, really with a view where, because it was built on trying to have a culture where we took the competition out of the industry, we all trying to do something together, we didn't then want there to be a almost a leaderboard on how much each company is contributing to uh, to the cause. So everyone um, monthly will, will tally up the invoices that they've, they've raised and then donate um, one pound, one dollar, one euro um, to to the initiative. And we only ever broadcast the total amount that's raised as opposed to the individual contributions. And the feeling on it was or certainly when we started it is that if two or three of us got together and, and did it, certainly Miriam, Hannah and myself, when we first started having conversations, that between the three of us, we wouldn't be able to, to raise sort of like life-changing amounts of money for everyone. But when you start to do the maths and you say, okay, if we had 10 members, 20 members, 40, 60, 80, 100, soon that all adds up. And that's that's what we found for, for I suppose, the first six six to eight months that we've been, uh, we've been doing it. Geez, that's great. That's really great. I'm very happy to help promote that idea. So, so Miriam, uh, how aggressive are you searching for members? Oh, well, you know me a bit. Some call me aggressive, <laughs> some call me ambitious. <laughs> no, well, we are not. No, <laughs> stop laughing, everybody. I'm not. I'm not aggressive. I'm just. I'm very motivated to get this off the ground because what. Um, what Ben and I and Hannah and all the other members now, what we have 
seen and what we want to change is the way people are working together in our business. Because when we work together with our colleagues, we're all super open and we share our experiences. But as soon as it comes to speaking to someone from a competitor or from another company, everybody is very, um, very much focusing on what they achieved. They're not always 100% honest on how they are feeling. We're not talking about all of our well-being. How how are things going? How is our experience? So what we are trying to do is invite people to join the initiative. And it's not so much to join the initiative to become part of the charity. It's more that we want to see if we can change the culture so that instead of being competitors, we want to be colleagues, but just at another company. So we're trying to invite everybody we are um, posting as much as we can we are trying to we're working on the website we are working on the linkedin group we have several chats per week i i think about people who are thinking about becoming a member but what we see is that it's very difficult especially for larger organizations to promote the idea internally so we have i think in total we've spoken to maybe 300 people um, and you can see that it takes a lot of time to actually launch and pitch the idea in their company. So I think it takes a little bit more time. You all know me. I think when we started, I thought we would have a thousand members within the first year. But that was maybe a little bit uh, too ambitious. So it's not going as fast as I was hoping. But uh, as Ben once told me, if, if we would have been a company and it would all have been new clients, I think we would have been uh, very proud of what we achieved uh, so far. Well, I think so too. Uh, ben, uh, tell us again about uh, Simply London. Uh, are you feeling that um, business is, as we go into the new year, um, you know, some some companies, some activity is slowing down right now, mm -hmm. but uh, others are not. So what what are you seeing around you? Yeah, it's interesting. If, if you look at the, the media in the UK, then that will tell you that next year is going to be very difficult, that no one can afford to live in London, that big tech firms are laying everyone off. So if, if you speak to the, if you look at the media, then I'd say the outlook is negative. If you look at the, the facts, if you check what's actually around you and the clients that we work with and things like that, and the companies we speak to, I, I, I don't see at the moment that there's any sign that it will, it will slow down. I'd say normally this time of year is where we would have come out of a, what we call the busy period in the summer and would be starting to calm down. I'd say there's an element of it, but not to the point that it's been in the past. So we, we know there's challenges there. Um, I read an article this week about, you know, big tech and how many people that they've let go. The article that I read said the number of small and medium sized tech companies that are still aggressively recruiting from overseas will, will, will offset that from a relocation perspective anyway. So we're, we're still positive. Um, it certainly feels feels that way um, when you speak to our consultants. None of them sort of say that they're sitting around with not a lot to do. So, yeah, it's uh, I mean, look, the last few years has been so unpredictable. Um, you know, I mean, we've gone through uh, three prime ministers here since we uh, started Relocate the Profit and we only started that in April. So it's um, there's lots that we can't predict. But in terms of how it feels and the clients that we work with and stuff, we're 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 still. Yeah, we're okay at the moment, but yeah, time will tell next year. Okay, let's go to Patrick Michaels. Welcome, my friend. Good morning. Good morning from Philadelphia. Nice to see you, Ed. Nice to see everyone. Yeah, I, I thought you'd back in Philadelphia. I thought you'd be in in the Palm Trees state there. Well, listen, I work <laughs> in West Palm Beach. I happen to be here visiting my family for Thanksgiving this week. But yes, yeah, I, uh, yeah. since we last uh, spoke, I've had some uh, career changes and life changes. So. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I think many of us have but one way or another. <laughs> here we are. True. We're still around. So congratulations on uh, on your new position and back with uh, your old friends. Yeah, yeah. It's so almost it's like right. family. Talk about family. Yeah. They, they, they certainly are family. You know, I started with the, the Corman family in 2003. And obviously, I relocated to London, went out and did a few different things and worked in mobility and relocation, started my own firm. Um, and I had an opportunity to return to the U.S. and launch AKA West Palm in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. So life is great. Yeah, uh, I bet. That's wonderful. But yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be back with you guys. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
you've joined up with Relocate the Profit, and uh, uh, I'm I'm really impressed that uh, you see the value of that, and uh, you, you know your energy level is like superior, <laughs> and so uh, I think that uh, the the Relocate the Profit is is going to just take off with you uh, involved. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, when, when Miriam and I spoke, Miriam and I have always had a very strong relationship. Oddly, we've never actually worked together. We've worked for the same firms at different times, but we've always had that connection. And, you know, the one thing that we talked about in the last session that I joined Ed two years ago now was co-opetition, right? And Miriam right. just talked about that, right? I've always seen the value right? We compete in the same space, but we also, you know, we, we can be competitors, right? But why not share information, build networks and share, right? There's enough business for everyone. And in my opinion, in AKA's opinion, um, it's always been my feeling that you're stronger when you're united and you share information. It's better for the clients. It's better for the industry and, you know, for everyone's growth. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about AKA uh, West Palm. Tell us uh, in about two minutes uh, about the property and, and what your target market will be. Our target market is everyone. Um, everyone is welcome. But yeah, AKA has gone through a few changes. Ed, as you know, you know the Corman's well. It's evolved many, many times over the years. Um, it is the Corman family. We created the first furnished apartment in the world in the 1960s in Philadelphia. This is the highest expression of the brands. Um, so AKA, uh, we are growing at a very rapid rate. So we've now rebranded to AKA hotels and hotel residences. Um, you know, this is our second in South Florida. We purchased one in Boston earlier this year. There will be a second in Boston very soon. London is a huge market for us. Um, AKA West Palm is part of the hotel resident side. So it's for that longer term stay. So ideally weekly, monthly, extended monthly. So we will deal with a lot of relocation mobility clients. If you're not familiar what's happened with uh, South Florida, it's now the Wall Street of the South, right? After COVID, one of the things that happened is everyone from the Northeast and not exclusive to New York, it includes Philadelphia, DC and Baltimore. All of those executives figured out they can work from anywhere, right? So they took those headquarters, Goldman Sachs is a great example, right? They took their headquarters in New York and they actually opened a secondary or a tertiary location in West Palm Beach. So it's, it's exploding right now in that market. Um, we have 215 residences. It's brand new. It's absolutely stunning. One mile from the beach. The wealth in Palm Beach is unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, it's been a very fun project and it's, it's good to be back in the U.S. Well, I think we're going to have to hold a meeting there. So. I agree. I agree. I already told Miriam. I told Miriam we have to do that. <laughs> That's great. So, so Inigo, um, what, uh, what are you going to be doing in 23 that you didn't do in 22? Well, that's a very good question. Well, I guess I would be traveling somewhere where I've never been um, with my family. So... Um, we have in mind a few places, uh, but one would be Greece. Um, so we want to travel with our RV uh, from Spain to Greece. Um, I don't know how many kilometers would that be, but probably 2,000 miles or something like that. Um, yeah, just to get there. So it would be an interesting trip if we decide to, to go ahead with that. Otherwise, it would be somewhere else. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So this is the, the first thing. Um, and then probably the second thing, and, and this is related to re relocate the profit, but I'm, I'm always thinking of, of what else uh, we can do as a company to support uh, the people who need um, our support. So we have a, a few initiatives um, to support the Ukrainian refugees, including uh, free Spanish lessons for the uh, refugees in Spain. Uh, but um, I think we'll have to think about other initiatives that, mm -hmm. that we may uh, put in place. Um, and, and something that, that was uh, mentioned by Miriam, like that she thought that we were gonna be a thousand members in a few weeks. And the thing is that for anything related to donate money or, or do things for others, like everyone is very happy. Okay, yeah, congratulations. 
But then when you get to the next point, okay, can you give me some money? Then it becomes harder. So if you have 1,000 leads, it becomes to 30 leads, and then they sign 15, as in our case now for relocate the profit. Um, so um, I think I would like to do some more uh, things. And something that I always have in mind because of the Ukrainian thing that has um, marked a, a, a lot in my life is that once the war is over, hopefully soon, um, I'd like to do something uh, on site, uh, see what else can be done. And, and also again, coming back to relocate, um, when you do something on your own, it's like, okay, it's great, but <laughs> with um, the size of our company or, or uh, it's difficult to do something that, that makes a, a big change. Um, so if I, I can do something, we can do something with some partners, especially if it's in the global mobility. So it's like people that you know how they think, you have many things in common. So that's, that's great. And that's one of the reasons why I joined Relocate the Profit because this is only the start. It's been only um, a few months and uh, we've done like uh, what the, the founders uh, had in mind in the beginning, uh, but I'm sure that uh, in a few years, we, we may come up with other initiatives um, that we may don't even think at the moment, but I think this is like a, a very first step and hopefully it will become something uh, very big. Like if you add one, uh, plus one, plus one, plus one, many times up to the 1,000 that million wanted, then it's it's a lot. So um, hopefully this will happen next year. Let's talk to Ben. Ben, tell us about Relocate the Profit and about the Livingston Trust and about that project in Tanzania. Yeah, so we the the charity that we we're raising money for um, in our in our first year um, is the the Livingston Trust in in Tanzania now. It's a, a charity that I'd certainly never never heard of until we'd, we'd started working with them. I think it was important to us to, to maybe work with, with a charity and in an area that maybe gets less attention than, than, than other places. And I think the one thing that appealed to us more than anything, they're, they're a charity that specialise in getting children into education and specifically young girls. Um, and you know the UNICEF stats will tell you there's a hun over 120 million girls that will never ever see a classroom. And that's from, from age five right up to, to age 18. And when you look at the amount of women that work in, in global mobility, that would have never even had the chance to get there without something that I would take for granted, which is a simple education. Um, and when the more that we've worked with them, the more we've spoke to them and we talk about the projects that they're doing, it's, it's really, in, I suppose, really inspiring to, to hear what they're doing, things that, you know, day to day, I would never even have considered, you know, I have young girls myself, they go off to school, and I, I think nothing of it. Um, one of the projects they did recently, they, they paid for, for 80 beds to go into a dormitory in a school, which means that the girls can go there from Monday to Friday, and not have to have a three hour round trip by foot every single day to go to school. Um, you know, absolutely. You, you almost you can't relate to it in, in, in the world that I live in. So things like that, it's really, um, you know, really incredible to think that we're we're playing a small part at the moment in in contributing to those real real time improvements in in children's lives. Um, you know, I say it's uh, yeah, it certainly opened opened my eyes in the last twelve months. Ben, that's a really good story. Uh, so tell me, um, you know, hearing you talk, um, I, I wonder about the cultural. Uh, I hate to use the word danger, but uh, or interference where you're you're coming up with money that's honest and mm -hmm. the purpose is is honest and goodwill uh, but to get young girls to go away from their family and their everyday have and you know practice living sounds good to us because it's a chance for them to learn and to grow and be safe mm -hmm. but it's probably almost an intrusion in some people's lives in such uh, an underdeveloped area. Uh, but I'm guessing, would you instruct me, you know, correct me in the audience in their thinking about this kind of a do-gooder effort? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. And the, the thing that we have to be aware of with anything like that, which I've said, I've, you know, completely naive to the, to the whole process is that 
there, there is a completely different culture in Tanzania surrounding education um, than there is in, in the UK, in, in, in the US. So there are those, those things to consider definitely. I mean, traditionally speaking, um, and it's not just Tanzania, there's, there's, there's plenty of other countries that are the same, where given the choice, the culture is, is to send the boys to be educated and for the girls to stay behind essentially and, and work on the, on the land. Um, that's, that's been the, the tradition. Now, one of the things that the, the Livingston Trust does, it's not necessarily a case of saying, right, well, let's, all these girls that are doing this, we need to get them into a, into a school environment because for, for those families, it might be that they don't, you know, they might not want their daughter to walk an hour and a half every day to, to, to go to school and back. So another thing that they do is they work on making those education environments safe, um, clean, um and accessible for them so it's a it is a balance you know it's not something that i profess to have a an enormous understanding of but certainly that the, the charity do um and i think they they use that experience and that knowledge of the area they have a lot of people on the ground so it's not just a case of we gather the money here and we send it over and hope for the best they spend time in these communities and i think predominantly it's almost a case of going and learning and listening to what they need, learning what they need for, for them, and then being able to provide that back, as opposed to it being, um, like you say, almost, a, you know, we've come over to with all this money, and we're going to put all the girls into school, and we're going to do this. I think they do an awful lot of listening and learning on the ground to really feel what the, the community needs. So Miriam, would you like to add to that? Well, I think it might be, um... I have two two things to add actually because so relocate the profit we have a we have a group of members uh, and we are all equal so we have our members meetings and we select together with all the members we select a new charity each year so we are now donating to Livingston Tanzania Trust but uh, in one of our next members meetings we will select a new one for the new year of of existing the relocate profit so it's not that it's permanently linked to Livingston Tanzania Trust. Um, so that's the first thing. And I, I think it's it might also be interesting to find out why we actually came, because Ben already, as always, he he had a one he had a great story, which is 100 percent correct. But what is also maybe interesting is that even though we um, we work in the relocation business and we are all international companies, I think it is very focused on international but only the western part of international and i think we should also focus on the countries that are actually uh, not being taken care of and don't get any attention in the relocation business because i also think that it's important that as a group and as a as a community we should also focus on the sustainability of relocation and that's not only uh reusing boxes or uh, using uh, electric vehicles instead of uh, diesel vehicles, but we should also see if we work together what it is that we can give back to the world and not so much Europe, but also look at where is our help needed. Uh, and I think for now it's for now we're focusing on Africa, but it could also be like Inigo said, maybe for next year we should definitely focus on Ukraine or maybe in the year after, maybe the members have a very good uh, plan in Asia where they want to work for elderly people. So it's not it's not strictly um, focusing on one group, but it's uh, it it's just wherever their members uh, wherever they lead us actually. So so Patrick, you're an entrepreneur um, as I am, uh, as we all are uh, to some extent. Patrick, what do you think about? the idea of uh, one dollar or one pound or one euro uh, out of every contract. I mean, it seems like nothing. So, um, you know, if, if you have a hundred um, sales, uh, in, in other words, a hundred nights booked with a hundred different people, so you're gonna give a hundred dollars, right? Well, I, I, think I mean, you... that's the concept, right? Sure. I mean, the, the way that I look at it is, um, you know, when Miriam and I first spoke, it wasn't even a question that we wanted to be involved, right? Philanthropically, I think it's a brilliant idea because it's something that is, you know, you can present to someone 
and it's easy to swallow that, right? You know, right. It, it's one dollar, it's one euro, it's one pound. Great. Well, if I look at 215 residences, right, there's 30 nights for each of those. So if I'm looking at all of those clients, that, that, that's a huge potential over a year. I've committed AKA West Palm as managing director. AKA also has 14 locations. AKA has a sister brand, which is AV, which has 16 locations. So, I mean, I think, at, I don't wanna speak for Miriam in the broader group, but I look at it in a broader sense, right? This is the start of something. And when you look at, yes, it's $1, one pound, one euro, the opportunities are endless with this network, right? You're looking at people that are so incredibly networked and you look at our LinkedIn accounts, right? Miriam, uh, thousands of connections, right? I have 8,000 connections. So I think while it's starting in this manner, that doesn't mean that it's gonna continue, right? It's gonna, it's gonna get big quick. And I don't think it's unrealistic to think that there's gonna be a thousand members. I think this is gonna be huge. So the multiples are uh, amazing. So it's how the message is put out and not just um, blurbed out. Uh, like for instance, I personally on LinkedIn have 18,601 or something, you know? And, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, and when we send out a blast, it depends on the show and the popularity of the people or the topic, but, we could reach a half a million in a week or even faster uh, in terms of total reach, which is sort of like overwhelming, you know, when you think about that. It actually keeps me up at night sometimes thinking and, you know, feeling the responsibility of, God, why did I say that? So many people are listening or watching. So, I mean, so with, yeah, the reach is there, but then making it real and um, fearless. In other words, removing the fear element that someone's going to steal the money or do something else with it. I think. I think with you know, and I don't want to speak for anyone on the call as you know, I've I've just joined this and Miriam and I spoke recently, right? Again, to me, philanthropically, this is a brilliant idea, um, and I don't. Yeah, think the structure that- is terrific. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. And I don't I don't think any of the leaders or the executives that are a part of this group would be a part of, you know, an organization or a charity that wasn't incredibly vetted before the decision was made. And I think that trend will continue. Right. As Miriam said, this is the charity for this year. You know, let's hope that this becomes so big that there's multiple charities throughout the world and globally that we can support. So. I think, again, we have to go through and Ben would probably have a better idea of the vetting process, but I'm, I'm 100% positive that process has happened. Yeah, let's talk about Ukraine for a moment. I mean, it's so tragic. It's so, it's just disgusting how bad uh, some people are are feeling and involved. So, um, you know, there's going to be like a in the U.S. the, the Marshall Plan rebuilt parts of Europe. You know, uh, and the World Bank has already committed to be involved uh, to give money um, in some kind of a fund uh, to help rebuild Ukraine. Uh, the you know Russia should donate all their oil for a year or something. You know, all the revenue uh, because it's all their fault. But uh, I think organizing something in addition to uh, Tanzania or Tanzania, I'll say it, um, is a great idea going forward once this uh, war is uh, settled. But anyway, that's I think, just, I think uh, Ed, and coming back to the NGOs and also related to Ukraine, I think it's it's one of the things that goes around my head, like what's the overhead of the um, charity that we are do- do- donating? How much money of, of the amount we are sending will Good actually point. convert into something um, right. very nice? Good point. So, uh, and, and based on, on my experience uh, supporting U- Ukraine, um, it's not at all an easy thing. Like, uh, what are you going to do with, with the money that, that, you, that you raised? Um, uh, and I can give you an example. Um, 
uh, I don't know if you know the, the World Central Kitchen. Um, it's a charity based in the US by a Spanish chef that uh, whenever there, there is um, something bad going on in, in a country, earthquake or whatever, they set up their kitchens and they feed people for free. Uh, oh, right. So when I when I went through this um, trip to the Ukrainian border, uh, I actually saw them there. The, 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 there were many many NGOs and many charities, but I saw them, and that was I I I, I remember. Okay, yes, I saw them on TV. They are here. So uh, part of the money I raised when I when I did this trip, I, I just sent it to, to them. I don't even know like again what's the overhead there, but at least I saw them. I I, I know they were there and they were feeding people. So. Um, I think that the vetting uh, system um, uh, should be very important, but even if you do everything in your hands, um, you, 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 you have still like an, uh, the unknown. So it's not 100% sure that, um, that uh, any charity would do the best usage of, of the money. Uh, you don't know the salaries of the people involved. You don't know if they are spending money in things that are not relevant. Um, so, so, so yeah, the, uh, doing something for Ukraine uh, next year, and, and also doing something, I think, in parallel or, or in parallel of the government helps. Uh, that's also important because I, I've been dealing with government in in Spain to see what can be do, done together, like how I could help them, and and basically they say no, leave, leave it with us. So. The, the, in many cases, they don't want the help of, of people willing to do things, um, which I, I don't really know, know what that means. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it should be anything in parallel to the official government things, and probably through an NGO, or even uh, if we grow if we grow more, uh, do our own projects. That would be ideal. But of course, we need uh, more money, more members, and and hands. Oh, thank you, Inigo. All right, we have around five or six minutes remaining. Uh, of course, we can go on forever, but I think the audience will disappear if we stay much longer. So let's go to Patrick again. What do you think of all this? Where do we go tomorrow? Yeah, you know, I just wanted to add one thing to what Inigo just spoke about. And, you know, I think when, when, you, when you look at everyone, right, when you think of countries that need help, right? The first country that currently is going to come across everyone's mind is the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. When is the last time you thought of Tanzania? I can tell you that before that conversation with Miriam, it wasn't a frequent thought. So I actually love the idea. And I take the perspective that Tanzania is a great target, right? That is a great country to focus on because everyone in the world is currently focused on the Ukraine. I'm not saying that we won't focus on that, but I love taking the approach of looking at something that is a little off the cuff, right? That you may not think of on a daily basis. Good point, Ben. Yeah, I, I completely agree, Patrick. It's a, a conversation I think actually me and Inigo had right at the point when it, where Inigo joined the initiative where I think it's an easy thing to look at something like Ukraine and there's tons of other examples where just because something terrible is happening there and, and obviously it is, it doesn't mean that all the other need for charitable work stops. Tanzania and the problems that they have still exist. And what can actually happen is because of the exposure that something like Ukraine gets in the media is that people's first thought is like, well, I've got this money to give or I've got this help, I'm gonna put it there. So I, I completely agree. Yeah, I mean, it's look, you, we, we can't help everyone. And once you start looking at, at all, the, all the places and the countries that you can, that you can help, the list goes on forever it becomes a full-time job so no I, I i agree with that um it's a it's a positive conversation as i say something that me and Inigo picked up on would have been six seven months ago i think so really super point tina yeah absolutely i think uh you know we, 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 if, if we look at the world with a magnifying glass you know we, we probably need thousands and thousands of more charities but uh uh I, I, where, where we want to go we know as a as as a charity group where we want to go we have uh our ambition and we have a goal and uh uh like uh, all the members here what they said we we'll, we'll get to that goal and then uh hopefully move on we got some great people on the on the, on the team so with great ideas so uh i i really look at the positives more than the negatives uh because we can't 
you know, you can't exclude the negatives in, in everything, but I think uh, going forward, it's going to be uh, uh, great for us all and uh, for Relocate the Profit, and we're just going to go on and on and get more members. That's that's what we're here for. Oh, well, Miriam, uh, you want to sum up and take us to the next level? <laughs> Oh, take you to the next level. Well, what I, I think it, it might also be interesting for. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be ag aggressive now to get all these new members. No, I'm not going to do that. No, but I think it's. Uh, I think it's important to. Um, so now we have um, with Patrick, we have 20 members. Our goal is to have 30 mm -hmm. members by Christmas. But looking at all the the numbers that you have, Ed, I'm pretty sure that it might be 130 by Christmas. So let's uh, let's get that started and. Uh, later on, when we're big, when we have a thousand members, it will not only be donating money, but we will also be uh, exchanging services. We can help out with uh, a home search in a, a refugee family in Australia or a language training refugee family in Germany. So at a later stage, when we have enough members, we can build something really big out of this. But I, and I think with Patrick, we. Um, he knows how to sell everything. He could sell. He could sell ice cream to an Eskimo. So I think it would be. Uh, I think we're going to. Uh, I think we're going to grow so big that we might. Uh, maybe next year we don't even want to be in the show anymore because we're too busy. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's go for <laughs> thirty by Christmas. <laughs> Thank you guys for being on this program, and please come back. Let's do it again. Have an update, uh, say uh, the end of January or something. Sounds good. All Thank right. You. Good. All right. good. Thanks, Ed. Thank you for having Thank me involved. Much, Thank you. I look forward to participating um, as a donor also. So everyone, buy an ad. <laughs> hey, already one member. I'm going to send you the paperwork. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Okay, ciao. Thanks, Ed. All right. Bye. Uh, happy bye -bye. Thanksgiving. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Uh, Thank you, Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you.